Hey everyone, welcome back to Rose's Year of One. Before we start, I would like everyone to know this is the liquid lipstick from my project pan, just so that I can like have proof that I use this product, despite the fact that as those of you who watch my project pan videos will know, it never looks any different. It's, it's as if I don't touch it, but I promise I do, today being an example. So, ju I just wanted to get that on record. I do use it. Here is the proof. It just doesn't change. That aside, if this is your first time to my channel, then my year of one is a low buy project that I am doing this year. It follows on from doing a no buy project last year. I wanted to reintroduce shopping and spending back into my life because I do enjoy shopping and spending, but I never wanted it to become the sort of emotional crutch that it was for me before my no buy year. So doing a quantity controlled low buy where I can only buy one thing a month it's a way of me keeping on top of that and that is what most of my content is about is about me trying to keep on top of it about consuming in a conscious way and about getting used and appreciating the things that i do have and not always wanting to buy new things i'm really sorry if you can hear that bell my cat is i don't know what she's doing just outside the door playing some kind of little game um so yeah her bell's going a little bit mad on her collar so sorry if the camera is picking that up the low buy part of my year is about things that I am bringing into my life but the other side of my general financial project is that I have the budgeting side of it and that is what today's video is about it is an update on how my budgeting is going but I've been planning to do these on a monthly basis but I haven't done one since April so I've got May, June, July, August, September and October to catch you up on so yeah let's not waffle any more in the intro let's just get into how the budgeting has gone through those months. I will be referring to my Google spreadsheet which I'll put cutaways of in the video but if I'm looking down at my phone that's what it is. In May my I had a rollover from April so I opened the month of May with a budget of £317.44 and I spent £336.44. That's a strange 44 pence mirroring there what an odd amount but anyway which meant that I was £19 over my budget in the month of May. The way that my spending broke down in May was £26.30 on beauty services which I think is my eyebrows being done and then it looks like there's £3.30 which I think is probably a deposit on a nail appointment or a hair appointment. Beauty service replacement items I spent £10 so that's probably hair dye. Miscellaneous services I spent £12. I'm not even sure what that is. This is the thing when it's been so long since I've like filmed the update video. This is why I'm supposed to do it monthly. But anyway, £12 on miscellaneous services, whatever that was. Nothing on experiences. £155.95 on eating out. Now, we were in a lockdown at the whole start of this year. So I think maybe what's happened there is May has been the first month that we can eat out again. So there's been a lot of catching up to do because it's... £155.95 over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 times that I've been out which is more than I would generally go out to eat out within a month so I'm presuming that's kind of what's been going on there. On work lunches I spent £40.30. Quite a lot on entertainment, 66 89 so £4 at the top I think that will have been my Patreon payment, 9 99 will have been Netflix, 7 99 will have been Audible, 27.45 that's probably been like a Waterstones haul or something. Another four pounds which is maybe like an audiobook or something. 9.99 which I think will be Spotify and 3.47 which is again probably an ebook or an audiobook or something like that. Nothing on tools for hobbies. 25 pounds on replacements and nothing withdrawn. So that was how May broke down. <laughs> Going on to June, because I was overdrawn in May, I took that out of my June starting budget. So my budget for each month is £250, which comes in on the first of the month. But I was £19 over my budget in May, so I started June with a budget of £231. And I spent £251.45, so I was £20.45 over my budget in June again. June spending broke down to £38 on beauty services. Eight ninety nine on beauty service replacement items, one hundred and eight pounds on eating out, thirty four pounds and fifty pence on work lunches, twenty nine ninety eight on entertainment, and thirty one pounds and ninety eight pence on replacements. 
July was my birthday month. July I started because I was over in June. I started with a budget of two hundred and twenty nine pounds and fifty five pence. And in July I spent three hundred and seventy two pounds and seven pence, which meant I was over my budget by one hundred and forty two pounds and fifty two pence. That broke down in July one hundred and seventy one pounds and fifty pence on beauty services, which was one hundred and twenty eight fifty on my hair, um, and I got a discount on that and £43 on my nails. So it was only two services, but that has been the majority of my budget. If this is not your first time to my channel, you've heard me talk about the whole hair saga. I basically, I've only actually been to the hairdresser once this year and it was that one time. And it just, I've come to the conclusion I really can't keep getting my hair done because it takes too much of my budget. Honestly, like, see, before I used to track my spending and stuff, like, like when I was a student, which is the weirdest thing about it, um, like I was at the hairdresser every four weeks and I have been, like my hairdresser who's really steadily increased, I was thinking about this, when I started going it was about £70 to get my hair done and that last time there was £120.50 so A, my hairdresser has gone through the ranks so he went from being like the sort of standard hairdresser, he's now a director so you obviously pay more for that. Also just inflation and whatever it's yeah like when I started going there it was much more affordable than it is and it's just one of those ones that it's increased incrementally over the years so I haven't really noticed it and then when I've started doing this and budgeting and tracking it I'm like that's a huge percentage of my disposable income that I'm spending on getting my hair done. I've only actually been once this year. I wanted it done for my birthday. Obviously once I've filled you in on all the spending we'll talk about the fact that I have really really struggled with this budget you can tell when in I've done May June and July and I've been over budget in all those months so far but yeah like the hair is is such a big part of that then I only had two lots of eating out I mean the thing with July is I was away and um, I was away to London for over a week that was paid for me as part of my birthday and um, I do have a London vlog so you can watch that if you want to catch up on it but it means like I was that over budget and I wasn't even here very much in July so I've only got two lots of eating out which came to £114 then in entertainment I spent £31.97 and then on replacements I spent £54.60 and I remember as much as like this was back in July like I was basically over my budget right at the start of the month because I got my nails done and my hair done before my birthday so that was 171.50 I went out for a birthday lunch with my friends which was 74 pounds at the start of the month then entertainment 7.99 9.99 and 6 pounds came off right at the start of the month because all my direct debits are set for the start of the month so that'll have been I think Netflix Audible and Patreon and then I've spent another 7.99 later in the month which I'm not I think that might have been Amazon Prime something like that I with the entertainment I have been dipping in and out of those services so Netflix I've had consistently but I've like frozen my Audible account a couple of times I've currently frozen it at the moment as well there's things that if I wanted to watch something that's only available on a certain platform I've paid that for a couple of months to watch it and then I've cancelled it and I have been on it with the entertainment this year because it's been in my budget and I'm glad because of that that I did put it into my budget because I feel like Otherwise I would have definitely just kept going along like paying Netflix, Spotify, Audible, Disney Plus or Disney Life, whichever one it is now. I started when it was the other one and then it changed so I can never quite remember which one it actually is these days. Um, and then Amazon Prime as well even though I don't even want to fund Amazon but yeah I use Amazon Prime Video for things that are not on other platforms. And I definitely, had I not put that into this budget this year, would have gone along keeping paying for them every month. So I'm glad that I've put them in and I've taken the time to reflect on how much I was spending on those services so that I can stop it and I am aware of it. But I feel like that's something I'm not going to take from my budget next year because I feel like I've sorted it. I know that I'm getting my value out of what I'm using because I'm paying for it and I have taken it out when I feel I haven't been getting the value of it so I feel like it's kind of under control and although it's 
not a lot of money overall it's a big percentage of my budget every month that's going to those services so I feel like next year they're not going to come out of my budget so there's a little hint for next year is that there will still be a budget next year and then replacements I spent £54.60 53.60 of that was on my Drunk Elephant Vitamin C Serum and it was right, it was the very last day of the month and Boots had 20% off I think and I also got like bonus points or something and looking at the fact that I was already over my budget by that point I probably shouldn't have been buying it but I remember exactly the headspace I was in at that point which was like well I'm over my budget now so if I buy a, a cheaper Vitamin C Serum I'm still over my budget. I, I'm as, you know, it's kind of in for a penny, in for a pound, you know, you may as well be hung for a sheep as a lamb kind of thing. And I remember exactly where my headspace was at when I decided to just buy my vitamin C from Drunk Elephant. <laughs> On to August. I am somebody who really likes New Year, I like Mondays, I like fresh starts. So I feel like in August, Ironically, even though I bought that Drunk Elephant Serum on the last day of July and I think this is where I struggle is that I'm either so doing something or not doing something and I just felt like I started fresh in August and was like no we need to get back on it with this budgeting even though literally the day before i had been like well sod it we've thrown it now we may as well throw it the whole way and I think that is that I struggle with moderation in all senses of my life talked about this before but yeah I feel like if I'm you know a tiny bit over with something I'm just like whatever like once I'm over a little bit I may as well you know just you know may as well be 10 miles away from the goal if I'm going to be 10 millimeters away from it for me so I feel like in July I just completely given up then like literally the first of August came and it was a new month and I, and I was like right okay we need to start again we need to like get under control rather than mid-July being like hmm maybe I shouldn't just chuck another £54 serum into my budget here because I'm already over by £100 and then I'll be over by 150 it just didn't occur to me to do it not even that it didn't occur to me I just didn't want to do that because I was already, July was already done and I was already over for July so there was no point trying to save it. Does that make sense? Like in terms of my headspace and the way that I approach these things. Because I was so over in July, I was opening August with a budget of £107.48. I probably knew from the start that I wasn't going to get through the month only on that but I knew I needed to try and have a really skint month in August, which I did. So I spent £43 on beauty services, which was getting my nails done. I didn't spend anything on beauty service replacement items, miscellaneous services or experiences. I did eat out three times, which was £91. In entertainment, I spent £38.97, so two lots of £9.99, which I think is Spotify and Netflix. £7.99, which I think is Amazon Prime. £6 on Patreon and £5, which is maybe like an audiobook or something. Total monthly spend in August of £172.97 and I remember August feeling like a struggle like I didn't buy any lunches out at work in August I took my lunch every single day I only had three lots of eating out so I only saw my friends three times you know I got my nails done and that was my sort of indulgence for the month but it still adds up to quite a lot of money like £173 basically is what I spent in August even though I feel like in my head it feels like August was this super frugal month where I didn't do anything or go anywhere and I felt like I felt really sorry for myself in August and I think that's the thing is like that didn't feel like anything but it was still £173 and that is why I'm doing this because if £173 can leave my bank account without it feeling like I did anything for a month that's not ideal because that means it can leave my account several times over before I start feeling like I have like done something and I don't have enough disposable income for that to leave my account multiple times over with me not realising it. I'm just being honest about the fact that I felt really sorry for myself but also being you know me sitting here we're now in November looking back at that and I, I remember how 
rubbish I felt in August. I remember like feeling really sorry for myself, feeling like I had no money, feeling like I couldn't do anything because of this budget. I felt like, you know, like basically having a proper inner tantrum with myself. Like I remember it so clearly because I felt it so, you know, to such a degree and it was such a a live, all-consuming feeling within me that I, I very much remembered exactly how I felt. But also I'm sitting here in November being like, well, you still spent £173. I was still technically over my budget because my budget had to start at such a low amount because I'd been over it for May, June and July. But I, yeah, I remember how difficult a month August felt like for me, even though looking at the money, I didn't actually have that much of a frugal month. <laughs> On to the month of September. I opened September with a budget of £184.51 and I spent £195.14. So September is where I finally kind of got it. Not, it was still £10 over but it was a lot closer than it had been in previous months. September was another really skint month for me. You know and I don't know if that's why I remember August so much because the feeling continued through for September as well. I felt like September was this really skint month even though Lauren and I went to Newcastle in September so I like properly had like an experience in September like I went on a day trip but I still remember feeling like I was really hard done by. So yeah I'm not asking for anybody's sympathy by like saying that. Um, I'm more reflecting on how ridiculous it is that I felt hard done by when you actually look at the figures. But I think it is just important to remember that I'm looking at these figures and it's so easy looking at figures to go well you just shouldn't have done that or you shouldn't have done this but the emotions are what impacted on it so much whilst I was doing it. Does that make sense? Anyway so my September spend of £195.14 broke down to £23 on beauty services, which was getting my eyebrows done, £35 on experiences, £93.18 on eating out, £33.97 on entertainment and £9.99 on replacements. And then the last month that we're going to discuss in depth in this video is October. I opened October with a budget of £239.37 and I was over budget again in October. I spent £280.14. That broke down to £43 on beauty services, £5.99 on beauty service replacement items which was a box of hair dye, £126.30 on eating out. I don't know why I did so much eating out in October, just like it was people's birthdays and it just all adds up. Work lunches twenty two thirty nine, entertainment thirty four ninety seven, and replacements forty seven forty nine. So that was a spend then of two hundred and eighty pounds and fourteen pence, which meant I was forty pounds and seventy seven pence over my budget, which means I opened this current month of November with a budget of two hundred and nine pounds and twenty three pence. I am going to try and finish November under budget. Let's hope I manage it. Anyway, so that gives you the spends of the last couple of months. I am struggling with the budgeting, as you can probably tell. And I think that's partly why I've been avoiding filming a video because I was a bit like, oh, I'll film it next month and I can tell them I've fixed it and I've had a month where I've come in under so I've made up for the months I was over. And it just kept not happening. So I feel like I've bitten off more than I can chew with this budget and in, in terms of what I'm trying to take from this budget. I wanted to continue budgeting. I started my budget in 2020 when I was doing my no buy year. Things that were not in my budget last year that are in my budget this year are replacements. So replacements in 2020 I could buy freely, didn't take them from my budget and the entertainment which I think is the big one because that is a consistent chunk that doesn't really ever go down any month. So I feel, as I've already kind of covered with entertainment, I feel like that is not going to get any cheaper than it is. I feel like, yes, I want to be aware of making sure I'm using these services if I'm paying for them, which I feel like I've achieved this year. It's, it's not gonna get any cheaper. They're set prices and I am using them, that's the thing, because as I've said this year I've dipped in and out of different ones so if I've noticed I'm not using one 
I have like frozen it or cancelled it and then I've picked it back up when I've had a need for it. It obviously is something I'm choosing to spend money on so it's it's not that it's not a choice but I feel like that's not the equivalent of me sitting and working being like mm, I have brought my lunch from home but I really feel like I want a McDonald's so I'm gonna go get a McDonald's. It's not me kind of making that choice when there is an alternative equivalent. The alternative to not having Netflix is not having Netflix. Obviously that is an alternative and I know that all these subscription services are, there is a, a level of privilege to all of them because obviously, you know, most people will have TV packages and whatever. So if you're paying for like Sky or whatever it is, paying for that on top of it is a privilege and an indulgence and it's not something you have to be paying for. But for me, I don't really watch a lot of TV. I, in terms of actual TV, most of what I watch is on these streaming services. So I feel like for me, like if I was to buy my own house, I don't think I'd even buy a TV. If I'm honest, like I think I would just have my laptop and I would have like Netflix and you know, I would have Spotify on my phone and Audible on my phone and maybe Amazon Prime and like I don't know, I was going to say BBC iPlayer but if I didn't have a TV and a TV licence you're not supposed to use BBC iPlayer either. But anyway, somebody's mo I don't even know what's going on outside. I thought it was mowing but I think now it's leaf blowing. I'm really sorry if you can hear that. But yeah, basically I feel like for me paying these subscription services is what I would pay instead of paying for a television if I was to be in my own house. I think next year they're going to come out my budget because I feel like they've impacted my budget a lot this year. So looking at the yearly totals, this year I've spent £379.30 on beauty services, which is mainly getting my nails, my eyebrows or my hair done. Beauty service replacement items I've spent £87.97. On miscellaneous services, I've spent £12, still can't even remember what that £12 would have been. £70 on experiences, £817.32 on eating out, £394.85 on work lunches, and that is another one. Definitely get much better at that, but that is still something that I will keep in the budget next year because I definitely don't want to be spending a lot of money on work lunches. And then entertainment, this year so far I've spent £410.12 on entertainment, whereas my replacements for example I've spent £327.53 on replacements. So I've spent more on my entertainment than I have on my replacements. And I thought bringing replacements in was going to be the big thing this year that would be a big challenge to my budget. And I'm still glad that I've taken replacements from my budget this year because it has definitely made me think, do I really need to replace this right this instant? Could I do like two weeks without this serum and then buy it next month when we've rolled over? Like as much as that didn't happen in July, which is what we've talked about in this video, it has happened in other times. And you know, for example, one of my most recent replacements was I finished my Drunk Elephant um, makeup removing a uh, cleansing butter thing and I bought the Inky List one instead because it was much more budget friendly. Last year I wouldn't have maybe had the same motivation to do that and to explore like the more budget friendly options because I was buying my replacements freely. Whereas this year I've been more conscious and more considerate of it so I still feel like that has impacted the way that I've done replacements and I'm not really decided what I'm going to do next year in terms of replacements from my budget or not from my budget. The entertainment has added up to so much more money than I thought it would in terms of the impact because it's been consistent every single month. It's one of those things that I'm glad I've done it because I've now noted how much money I'm spending on it but I feel like I've learned the lesson with it and I feel like next year if I notice that I don't use Spotify for a couple of months or if I notice that I've I'm racking up audible credits and I'm not listening at the same rate as I'm um, paying for them that I will pause it and I feel like I've learned that behaviour so I feel like for next year the entertainment can go. I feel that entertainment needs to still be something I'm aware of how much I spend next year with it but not be from my budget. I think that's me brought you up to speed with my budgeting. I am struggling with it. The budgeting is, is a real is not my strong point. I am, um, I don't want to commit to what I'm doing next year at this point because there's still two months to go but I feel like budgeting is the big struggle 
so that definitely needs to continue next year and I'm at this point thinking I want to do an Obi year next year. I think I want to repeat what I did last year. Next year, I've talked about it before, but I feel like as well because we were in lockdown for so much of 2020 that I didn't really, it was such an alien year that I probably didn't get the experience I would have got from doing an Obi year in a normal year because I did it in 2020. So. I think next year I'm going to do a no buy year and I'll talk about it more in depth if I do decide to do that when I make a video talking about what I'll be doing next year but I feel like the no buy year is easier than the year of one because it's just like right we're just not buying anything and we switch off from that whereas the budgeting I just don't moderate well and I think that's why I've really struggled with the budgeting and I, I need to actually go back and look at my videos from 2020 but again I feel like the 2020 budgeting was, wasn't as hard but it was because in 2020 we were in lockdown so a lot of the things that I would have been taking from my budget just simply weren't an option in terms of I was far load so I wasn't buying lunch at work, theatres and things were shut so I wasn't buying experiences the way that I might have been otherwise, we weren't eating out, like we weren't socialising, like a lot of things that I would have spent money on from my budget weren't an option in 2020. So I feel like at the moment, because I am struggling with the budget, what I need is to shut down on the shopping side of things and really like the zone in on the budgeting and learning how to budget better. I feel like next year the budget is going to be the big focus of my project. I don't know if I'm definitely going to do it. I know by year what I might do is increase the budget a little bit, but I'm allowed to buy what I want so that I am shopping within my budget because obviously the long-term goal for me is to not have to think about my shopping and budgeting in quite such structured terms as I have been doing for the last couple of years but I'm not there yet but obviously that would then mean subconsciously having a budget that I both live and shop from so that is pro that is the end goal is to be able to do that in a non-structured way but I'm not there yet and I feel like the budgeting is the key element to that so I feel like that's what I need to practice and that's what I need to get better at so I think next year will be a no buy year but budgeting on the same stuff that I'm budgeting this year but without the entertainment that's where I'm kind of sitting at at the moment in terms of what I'm thinking but anyway thank you very much for watching this video I'm really sorry if it's been super noisy between whatever is going on outside it's driving me nuts my cat is having a fit people in my house are being really loud. There's no quiet Sundays around here apparently so I'm very sorry if it's been really heavy in terms of background noise but thank you very much for watching and I will speak to you in my next video which will hopefully be a more chilled experience. Bye!